Ah, China. The country everyone loves to hate. Seeing how it's nowadays with the oppressive regime of the CCP, you might think something has to be changed. And change, I will. Welcome to the second video on my channel after almost two years. Today we are playing Hearts of Iron 4 with the 8 years war of resistance mod. One of my all time favorite mods because it adds so much flavor to Asia, and I love playing in Asia. I will be playing as the Republic of China and try to kick Japan's butt out of mainland Asia while trying to unify China by killing communists. So let's head in. At the beginning China is in a weak spot. First of all there are many warlords still around us and second of all our nation is debuffed to hell man. We may start with a, a huge army of 104 division. The main problem with that though is that only half of them are fully equipped. First of all, we start with army factionalism, which makes our army very, very weak. We also have a fractured administration, which debuffs our stability and political power. We also have appeasement policy, which debuffs our war support and surrender limit. We also start with incompetent heavy industry, which basically disallows us from building tanks, anti-air or an air force or navy. We then also have unbalanced industry, which debuffs our industry even further, making it even hard to produce normal equipment. And of course we also have illiterate population which debuffs our research speed. And speaking of not being able to build an air force or a navy, we also aren't allowed to research them. Then we have Chang's dictatorship which buffs our political power and stability during war, it debuffs our war support and the other two stats are irrelevant. We have the blue shirt society which gives us stability and the central club click which buffs our political power again. We also start with something that the mod adds, inflation, and we start with low inflation. We also have free trade and we cannot get rid of free trade as long as we have the nine power treaty. We also start with a new economic law, the silver standard, which debuffs our economy even further. We also start with two advisors, one political advisor and something new, a foreign advisor. Our political advisor is giving us buffs like stability and reduced cost for high command, army chief, navy chief, air chief, political advisor and theorists. And we then also have Alexander von Falkenhausen, which is a foreign advisor from Germany. And he basically gives us army XP and some reduced land doctrine cost. Though he will get removed when Sino-German ties break. But let's get to the main point of every Hui format, which is the focus tree. The focus tree for the Republic of China is big and it has many different paths. I will go down the historical path and try to democratize China. There are also many focuses which help you get rid of your debuffs, which are mainly located here. I will at first uh, ignore the army and just put them on supply zones so that they don't get supply penalties. And I will only build mills and later some forts around this area. I will go with this production and try to research some industry and get to radio. I will also start with economic planning to get rid of the inflation already. You also start with constitutionalization pressure, which takes away your political power the higher the pressure is. So now it will take 30 political power away if this ends. You can reduce the pressure by going down these two focuses, but they will shrink your political power gain through this national spirit. For now, I can start. I successfully split off the Piling Miao Council which gave Shaanxi some more land. So when the Piling Miao Council defects, I will not lose that much land to the Japanese. Imagine dying because you accidentally dropped your pistol. I've now continued the encirclement campaign, which puts me into war with the communists, but I will not try to push into them because it's impossible. And now the Mongol military government was established, basically meaning they defected to the Japanese. And also the... Northwest Bandit Suppression Headquarters have demilitarized their border with the communists, which is also a factor why I'm not pushing into them. Looks like the anti-Japan Salvation Army has formed. The Guangdong Click Rebellion. Welp, let's bribe their officers. Officers and commander from the Guangdong Click switching allegiance. That means free land and an army for me. I will gladly accept that. New Guangxi Click Rebellion. Well, let's bribe their officers again, though this has a chance to fail. Looks like it worked and now I get even more free land and more troops. 
Looks like a political power struggle has started between me and the Sichuan clique. This means that I have to keep in check with that so they don't rebel and proclaim themselves to be the legitimate government. Looks like there's a attack plotted by the Mongol military government. So now we can send officers and supplies or more troops. Uh, I would go with more troops because the leader of the Shanxi clique already has some huge buffs for his army. And the AI always does better if they have more troops than really buffs. And so I pray that they will win against them because then they will get a supply hub which I can then defend and hold so the Japanese don't have one. Looks like Shanxi won and they gained the state from the Mongol military government, which is very helpful for me. Now the Xian incident triggered, which basically forces me to either accept a peace so that we can focus on Japan, or I will keep focusing on the Chinese Soviets and be at war with even other warlords now. Of course I will accept it, because it also is easier to fight against Japan if I'm not at war with the other warlords. This now made me immediately complete the Focus's Truce of the Civil War and Second United Front. Due to accepting, I now annexed the Northwest Army and got their troops. So now we are looking a bit bigger and stronger. I've now organized my army into three divisions, basically. First are my Coastal Guards, which are just those units. Uh, they're not great, but they can hold the coastline. Then I have my... Best troops, those are uh, 26 with, uh, with 10 infantry, 2 artillery and support companies. And they are mainly around here to hold Japanese invasion of Shanghai. And the rest are the troops I will send into the north. They are located right here because I don't really have a border with the Japanese right now and I cannot send my troops into that to prepare, to entrench them already. So I sent them there because this is then the fastest way to get to the front line. And they have this template which is very bad to hold but I don't have artillery or anything better. So I hope uh, this will, I hope this will um, do the job. Looks like someone started justifying against us. So the war has now started. <clears throat> I've already set up fallback lines where my troops will go. I will try and hold the river line as long as possible and also try to hold them off so my troops can entrench themselves. Let's do the Lushan Declaration. Also do an inch of mountain, an inch of blood. And the Dare to Die core. And now I will try and get my troops up there via railway. And we also start the Battle of Shanghai, which makes them spawn troops immediately in there. Beijing has now fallen, but I am holding the river line for now, which is good. I hope I will not get reinforced memed. Oh yeah, this is one thing I uh, don't like. It is them setting up puppet states which take territory which I already have, so they completely f*** up my uh, front line. It's also very hard for me to get my reform done, because I need to go down the military doctrine and have uh, army XP. And I'm not really gaining that much army XP from those battles. And it's also reduced due to the army factionalism. I'm playing very slow here, man. But I have to do that. Otherwise I will die. So, after some time, I can finally do my first army reform, which is gonna take 120 days. Uh, for now I'm holding. Uh, I don't really care about this much because they don't have supply. But for now, this looks fine. Two army reforms done. I'm currently waiting uh, to do the next. And my front is now stable, I guess. It's not as fragile as it was like the whole entire time now. Thanks to the army reforms, mostly. And I even regained the provinces. So we've done the Extraordinary National Congress, which gives me this cool buff here. As long as I'm at war with the Japanese, of course. Plus 0 0.5 political power. Um, um, I take that. I'm also now um, reforming my administration so that I can get rid of the, the fractured administration. So now, after some time uh, doing some political focuses right here, I've now gained I've now gained a huge buff here, which is helping me. Uh, my administration is just this one. Army reform. There's two more missing. And yeah, so I've tried the counteroffensive, which worked, and now I got the airport back here, which is huge, and I'm trying to get Beijing back now. And also Taijin. Uh, the Second World War just kicked off. Beijing and Taijin have now been recaptured, 
and I can do the last army reform and get rid of the last defense and attack debuffs. The communists started their partisan operations, which be a problem for me because they will just take territory from me. Well, those troops are going to die now. So now we're currently pushing them out of Manchuria, finally. Um, the Japanese front line just completely collapsed. They, their units are out of strength and organization. And now we can demand a Japanese surrender. We've won the war! I'm gonna not really use the political power much because I need it to reintegrate the warlords later. So the communists refuse to accept the re assembly resolution. So we will reunify China by force. Well, looks like they started justifying. And now we have to wait 175 days until the civil war starts. Uh, the war started and there were a lot of defections now. Uh, lost a lot of troops. Uh, doesn't really matter that much. Uh, they also gained some more territory. Right now I have Civil War Deserters only as a real debuff and they have like a lot of buffs like the people support and the War of Liberation. Okay, now capture the capital. Problem is I gotta take all their land to capitulate them. Because I automatically get my land, like get, get uh, the states immediately. They get bonuses when they are encircled, like god damn it. I don't think doing offenses are real. is really that smart, my friend. It is time to end this conflict. Now they're encircled and dying. Their casualties are just skyrocketing, especially with this pocket finally clearing. Uh, end of the Chinese Civil War. We have defeated the communists as the nationalists and now we shall try and unify the rest of China. I will now do constituent assembly and become democratic. So now that I did constituent assembly I can end political to the large. Which will unlock the democratic path here. Oops, so I've integrated the warlords now. Um, just gotta deal with Xinjiang now. So now I'm doing the Lighthouse of Democracy. And for the candidate which will represent Kuomintang, I will of course select Chen. I don't care really about the Chinese Democratic League. Well, I got Xinjiang now. Well, the first general elections. The result of the elections will uh, depend on the popularity. Then the Kuomintang won the elections. And now I'm democratic. We've unified China and we've also democratized the country. Anyways, I think that's it. I love playing this mod. I really recommend it. Uh, though it can be challenging, I don't really think it's that hard to hold this China. That's gonna be the video. Uh, I might do a video on the communists too, but I have some other stuff planned for upcoming videos and I'm gonna try to upload videos every Saturday. Let's see how far I'm gonna get with that. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you will leave a like and subscribe. So thank you for watching and have a great day. I'm so banned from China.